Uh, can someone check uh, if the streaming is happening? Just check and confirm me in the chat box. No, ma'am, it is showing that waiting for conditions. Okay. Yes, ma'am, it's streaming. It is streaming? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's start then. So only thing that is new in this week uh, is the first lecture. The remaining, uh, you have seen all this in uh, statistics, right? ML estimation, uh, then normal distribution. Yes. Yeah, all this you have seen, all the inequalities, except the hopping inequality, you have seen everything. So uh, mostly I'll focus on week, uh, like chapter one for week 12. And please also don't forget to save these notes. Uh, yeah, these notes will be saved. Uh, and please also share them at the earliest. Uh, okay, if I'm writing here, it's difficult to share for me. Uh, yeah, ma'am, after the session, I will amend it. Okay. Yes, ma'am, please share the notes. Okay, okay. And then one thing more, where do you put this shared content? I uh, hardly get any of these PDFs. These content? Yeah. Uh, these one we don't share. Oh, generally, this all with the slides uh, we share. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I request you to share at least these, these notes because this one is a difficult lecture. Okay. Uh, I will share this one. <coughs> all right. Let's start now. So first we have started with uh, like IID normal distribution, the standard normal distribution. So you have uh, a set of norm, uh, IID distribution. So you have Z1, Z2, up, so on till Zn and they follows IID normal 0, 01, right? So we can also, what we are saying is we can con look at these random variable as a vector z okay so we can say we have one vector z and it is of the size n cross one so you have all these random variables separately will be one term for this vector so you have z1 z2 and will go on to zn so i will just go with what the, what is the notation in lecture so it is zd, um, ZD. Right. now since they are IID normal distribution, if I if I want to find uh, the distribution for Z, capital Z. So, ma'am, uh, one question. So, when you are saying that Z1 is a vector, so um, Z1, what do you do? Z, Z is a vector. Z1 is a random. Each of these ZIs are random variable. Okay. So, that taking from these uh, values, this is an that, actually so scale. Each, okay. yeah, yes, yes. So, all of these ZIs they are nothing but normal zero one i am just writing it as a vector these are all iid samples no? they are all iid samples coming from a standard normal distribution okay so uh, now like you had seen that when you had two random variable uh, and if the, those two random variables were independent and if you have to write the joint distribution you can just do the product of marginals right so here you don't have just two random variables you have some d random variable and you have to write their joint density uh their joint density right so and these all random variables are iid and normal so what i can do is i can just write the product of these random variables so i can write fz of 
so these are all IID. So just write it as Z. So the product of F zero some small Z, right? And I is varying from one to D. Now what is this F uh, F zero of Z? So this is nothing but one upon under root two pi e to the power minus z square by 2 right and this you have to multiply some d times so when you multiply d times it becomes 1 by 2 pi to the power d by 2 right you multiply uh, because this is under root becomes d by 2 and then you get e to the power minus z square by 2 uh, and so on till uh, d times correct so this will become 1 upon 2 pi to the power d by 2 i can take this common so it becomes e to the power minus um, so let's say instead of writing uh, z if i just kept it z1 z2 z3 and so on so it is nothing but 1 upon 2 uh, z1 square plus z2 square up to zd square right this is what it is and since i am saying that the z1 z2 uh, Z zd i am consider uh, i am looking at it as a vector so i'm sorry i'm 2 pi 2 pi uh, 2 pi 2 or d by 2 or 1 by 2 it is d by 2 right because you are doing the multiplication for d times okay. so it will be uh, d by 2 Right. So, so D here is the number of samples. Uh, D here is uh, number, of, number of samples. Yes. These number of samples. Now, since I am saying that these Z1, Z2, Zd, it forms a vector. So, uh, you also know that the norm, uh, like L2 norm that you say, is given by... Uh, uh, is like if you have let's say a vector x right and this vector x is x1 x2 this is x1 x2 up to xn so if i have to write the two norm uh, l2 norm of this what do i write i just do the yeah. square of the yeah. product right so x1 square plus x2 square up to xn, square of which of xn square. so the same thing so the same thing we can do for here. So this, I can write this whole thing. I can write it as 1 upon 2 pi under root of d by 2. And this is e to the power minus 1 by 2 norm of z square. Okay. So this is your fz of z. So, ma'am, one thing I don't understand: why this is an um, hmm. why you can take small f z of z. Uh, this is a marginal probability value you have taken. Uh, why, which one? Uh, this initial this conversation f z of z. So, why you are taking it as a marginal where it is taken as a marginal? Uh, sorry, I did not understand. So, so at uh, the start of the equation, you say that if z, uh, z. I should, I should, uh, yeah, it will be a little confusing. Let me not write this. So, uh, you know, this is just going to be, uh, fz1 of z1, uh, so on till fz d of z d, right? Mm -hmm. And now, since each of these are like, if you, these all are uh, normal distribution with the, the like the standard normal distribution each of them will have the distribution as 1 upon under root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 upon 2 z1 square by z1 square each of them right and this will have under 1 upon under root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 zd square so after this i can write this correct so you are multiplying it d times so this is total d times and you get this and after this uh, we get this as our joint dist uh, like the joint distribution for uh, these random variables and if you are raising this to d uh, that one i can get 
reading this to d power the numerator also you have to raise it to d right uh which one uh square root 2 2 pi to the power d by 2 2 right. pi d by so 2 pi to power d by 2 huh? so numerator also you have to raise it to that power right i didn't get that it's not clear uh no why should we raise it to uh this is norm it this is not power this is the norm of z so uh, as i said like let's say if you have like you have seen it before right like if you have a vector x that is uh, nothing but x1 x2 up to xn right now if you want to uh, find the l2 norm for this so this you can write it as x1 square plus x2 square plus xn square so now in place of n random n terms in a vector i have d terms in a vector right so uh, our z1 square plus z2 square plus zd square will become norm of z right hi yes ma'am i thought that uh, i got yeah. that but i am not getting the uh, 2 pi d is to d by 2 in the denominator uh, this denominator is what this is like you are multiplying this or uh, d times so mm -hmm. 2 pi uh, mm -hmm. this is basically 2 pi to the power 1 by 2 you multiply d times what will you get you will get 2 pi to the power d by 2 right no i think uh, why uh, the d times is not multiplying in the numerator so i think that, that that is added in the power itself that's why z1 plus z2 plus zd is power of some i mean yeah this uh, um, maybe you cannot even write this you can just look at this and this is your f z this is a distribution for your z this one actually why we are doing this means why you yeah so after after this like we'll come to this so will the next step so this is just to give an idea like if you have uh, some uh, n or d i d random variable that is coming from a normal distribution i can write the joint density as in this form okay now we'll proceed further so next we will see uh, like some linear transformation Uh, so in week eleven you have seen the transformation. So uh, just the extension of that linear transformation. So again you have this z one z two coming from uh, so z one is z one z two coming from a normal distribution with mean zero variance one, and you define two random variables. Uh, so you have another random variable x1 that is you are taking it as just capital z1 and the other random variable x2 that you are defining as rho times z1 plus under root of 1 minus rho square times z2 okay uh and this rho belongs to minus 1 to 1 You have, uh, ma'am. You have assumed the row belonging to minus one and one. <clears throat> Is it some standard, or you have assumed it? This is uh, standard. I mean, for this uh, uh, this transformation, this is standard. So why are you we are doing this transformation? Uh, sorry. Why um, we are doing this transformation? Because uh, okay, now now what we do what do we want to say is like uh, uh, you have seen um, in week eleven uh, the transformation of random variable. Yes, we have right? seen it. So uh, there we had looked for uh, like in general cases, but now we want to know for like bivariate normal. Like so far, we have not looked at the bivariate normal distribution. So now we want like uh, what should be the distribution for the bivariate? So what is bivariate? What does it? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. What it actually means? Bivariate means what? Bivariate means you have uh, two joint variables. Uh yeah, like you have two, uh, two normal 
by by variable means two you have two variables and they are normally distributed so in that case how do you find their distribution okay so okay so there so is yes, there is, there be multiple peaks are there multiple What? peaks are there right and mm -hmm. and, and uh, here x1 x2 are uh, bivariate or z1 z2 z1 z2 here it is z1 z2 okay and two two normal uh, uh, two normal distribution in a one uh, simultaneously you will see uh sorry can you repeat two normal distribution simultaneously we will see for this right for this one for z1 and z2 so madam but I, I the think I, i did not understand what you said yeah so yes you are right so so madam i i don't understand if this z1 z2 z3 everything coming from 0 1 distribution then how can i see multiple peaks uh wait the multiple peaks for uh... see uh, we are saying that z1 and z2 are normal but this x1 x2 so this x1 is z1 but we cannot actually say that this x2 is also normal right i mean looking just at this okay so we we need to know like what should be what will be the distribution like what should be the uh, like we looked at the joint uh, density for z1 z2 now if i want to know like what should be the joint density of x1 x2 okay so how do we proceed for that so so the, so you are saying the joint distribution of x1 x2 may be a bivariate normal Is it no, actually, what what is the objective of doing this uh, in a broad sense? That if you can tell, then it will be better to proceed further. Yeah, like basically, we want to know what what uh, what the distribution of this uh, the joint distribution of x one x two going to be. Okay. Okay. Fine. Keep going. then why we are not able to do it using other method uh, that uh, uh, other method does it linear transformation that we learn in week 11 uh you can and do joint it. distribution can, can do be it. done by likelihood only or what we are doing previously okay. uh no no the transformation that you did in week 11 uh you can do using that also did you try uh did you try doing it using that method no no i think you should uh, try it once like uh, it's the same process you just try it once you will get the same result all right so um, okay so here we have two vectors you have x which is x1 x2 and you have uh, this set which is z1 z2 right. so this x which is x1 x2 right this you can also write it as something something times z1 z2 so if you compare it with uh, these this equation what do you get so it should be here from here you can see the first position should be 1 right it should be 0 then this should be rho and this should be under root of 1 minus rho square right yeah so yes. you are doing that uh, another matrix jacobian matrix you are doing jacobian matrix so, so this is this is not the jacobian matrix this, this is the coefficient matrix, matrix. yeah so uh no, now no, how it is not a jacobian matrix when this I, is not I, jacobian matrix right no no if you just make the dx1 by z1 uh, do the partial derivative of dx1 by z1 it will come as a z1 and dx1 by z2 it will be come as zero now in the same if mm -hmm. you do the z1 it will become as rho and this is come as a rho minus 1 square 
this jacobian matrix no you you are now you are transforming this z1 z2 to x1 x2 right so that only jacobian matrix do yeah no you are just writing the system of equations na x1 this is, is this is just system of equation yeah no no my question is navin that these matrices can be derived by using the jacobian form You can make a partial derivative. This on this, this one, this one. Yes. Um, Just make a make a for the for the uh, second row uh, mm -hmm. for the del x two make a del x two by del z one. So it will oh, it will come it will come as row. Okay, you then, are saying it for like uh, uh, okay the transform the uh, opposite transformation, basically. I mean the reverse one. I mean, instead of doing uh, uh, do z one by do x one, you should do do x one by do z one, do x two by uh, do x one by do z z two, right? Yes. This, this is what you are saying. Yeah, in that case, you will get this, ma'am. But in the in the second second row sec second row and second column, the term that is not the derivative with respect to z two, right? Root x is one by two root x. Root. No, no, no. I am derivating by z two, so that is a constant for me. Okay, okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. So, uh, this you can also write it as what? This can be written as uh, z equal a inverse x. Uh, so what is a inverse? If I take this as my a matrix, what is going to be a inverse? You just um, oh, interchange a and b. Yeah. So you will get. This is one minus two square, one by one minus two square. Okay, so this is what you will get for a inverse, and this is also Jacobian matrix, right? This is also Jacobian, and this. This you are getting. How how are you getting this? This is basically, uh, do z one by do x one, do z one by do x two, and this is do uh, z two by do x one and do z two by do x two. But how from the seeing the matrix you can say this is a Jacobian matrix. Okay. Like it, like this. This is a Jacobian. How we can see? Yeah. So, uh, why we can say this as? Uh, see, your system is, uh, your system is, x equal a z, okay, and uh, you are saying z equal a inverse x. Now let's say, uh, let's say my a inverse is uh, some a one one, a one two. If I'm talking about two cross two matrix, so a two one, a two two, okay, and this is just x one x two. So this is this becomes what this becomes a one one x one plus a one two x two. Then the second term becomes a two one x one, a two two x two, okay. Now if you look at it. If you look at it, this is this is nothing but if you do uh, if you do do z one by do x one, so you will get what a one one. If you do do z one by do x two, you will get a one two. Right? I'm doing this operation. Now, if you do do z two by do x one, so this becomes a two one. 
and those at 2 by 2 x2 becomes a to 2 so you see that uh, for the linear transformation you uh, like your jacobian matrix is nothing but the inverse yeah so you can just keep this in mind so this will be helpful ma'am every time the jacobian would be equal to inverse of the matrix in some special case uh only if they are invertible uh, like okay. linear transformation yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is invertible all right so so far we have seen um uh, uh, like uh, uh, okay so far we have seen like what can you write z as so z you can write it as a inverse x and the a inverse is the jacobian here and x now what we want is uh, we want to write our covariance matrix okay we want to know what the covariance matrix is so let's find it so we are interested in uh, finding the covariance matrix of x so where x is x1 x2 uh so to find this we need to know what is expectation of x1 what is expectation of x2 so i'll just write it here again so x1 was given to be z1 and x2 was given to be uh rho z1 plus under root of 1 minus rho square z2 so what is expected value of x1 it is just expected value of z1 so it is just zero expected value of x2 expected value of x2 is uh, rho times z1 so you get rho times expected value of z1 uh, which is uh, zero plus 1 minus this so this also comes out to be zero uh, now uh, for covariance you need uh, if i want covariance of x1 and x2 uh what is the formula it is expected value of x1 x2 minus expected value of x1 expected value of x2 so this this is going to turn out to be zero so it just your expected value of x1 x2 uh so how have you written the expected value of x1 and x2 to be zero because x1 is just z1 right so and z1 is uh, standard normal zero one so expected value is zero. okay 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 right right, right. right. now uh, i can do the multiplication here so x1 it will become a rho z1 square i'll just multiply these two rho z1 square plus uh, under root of uh, 1 minus rho square z1 z2 Okay. Uh, one short question I want to ask. In foundational level, you had given the formula sheets in the final exams and quizzes hmm. for uh, basic distributions. Would you be providing us uh, the same now? Or? No, uh, here it's not being provided. No, no, it is provided. It is provided. Yeah, yeah, question paper. How we can remember, madam? No, uh, uh, did you get the formula yeah. sheet? Yes, yes but, uh, in foundation it no, was available in statistics you got but i am asking for mlf no it is not there for mlf yeah that's what i'm saying it is not there for mlf no no for the final exam they will give it just a minute okay where is the notification where is the notification no no they will give the statistics formulas uh yes. i don't know from where did you get that information Just i am opening a one paper in the previous papers it was mentioned it was given it was given okay in previous one not sure what whether it will be given this time then just uh, just confirm will, it once we will uh, clarify this yeah 
Yes, they have given it actually. Okay, uh, let's proceed here. You know. Uh, so this is going to be what? This is going to be just row times expected value of z square, z one square, right? Plus under root of one minus uh, row square expected value of z one, z two. Now uh, you know that this z one and z two are independent, so this will just become zero, correct? So the second edit is zero, and what is expected value of z one square? So expected value of z one square is nothing but uh, just variance of uh, z one plus expected value of z one whole square, right? So variance of z one is sigma uh, one. So this will turn out to be just row. Now you know that for the covariance matrix, what all do we need? Uh, we need uh, You will have you will need variance of x one. You will need variance of x two and uh, x one x two and covariance of x one x two. Now where it is it in the customized series? Oh, uh, you have seen this in week eleven, I suppose. Okay, maybe I missed it. Yeah, this is there in week eleven. Okay, so we also need variance. So you can just calculate it. Oh, sorry. Um, so you can calculate it, and you will get variance of x one to be variance of x two. Both will come out to be one. You can check this. Now, what is the covariance matrix that you got? So the covariance matrix. Diagonal element will be one one. Yes. And and this element will be row row. Row row, right? This is row row. Let's not so this by uh, sigma. So, sir, remember, is it always be a symmetric matrix? It is uh, always a symmetric matrix. Yes. Because covariance of x one x two will be same as covariance of x x two x one, right? Similarly, if you have more random variable, it just uh, I mean it is symmetric. So here was just two random variable, but if you even have more random variable, you will you will get the pattern, right? You will get in this place covariance of x one x two, covariance of x one x three. Then here you will get covariance of x three x one. So all are same. So it just doesn't matter. Um, I didn't get how to be. How do you get this covariance matrix? I forgot. Uh, it is there in week eleven. Uh, maybe you can just check once. Yeah. So, if, if basically for two cross two matrix, this is your covariance matrix. Oh, sorry. Uh, how do we get variance of x one and x two? Oh, uh, you can calculate this. So x one is just uh, z one, so variance will be one, right? And, and for x two, you just use the property. So what is x two? X one in particular. Oh, uh, right. What? Which which property? A uh, property of variance, like uh, x two is what? X two is row z one. Uh, Plus one minus row square under root z two. Right. So uh, you do variance yeah. of row z one plus this. Uh, it will be it will be cancelled actually. Yeah. So this row is a, a Taking constant. Taking the row outside will become square. Something like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Variance of a x plus b is what you just call it variance uh, a square variance of x. So use that property and you will get it as one. Uh, and how did we get? Uh... Uh, how did you get what? No, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Then why you find covariance matrix now? Yeah, we'll we'll look. We'll we'll check. 
uh, please do share these notes um, yeah it is very yeah. useful very useful i uh, will share these notes then um, just let us know where you will be putting them so that we could find it them will, easily yeah okay okay we'll send the mail uh, all right now see uh, your uh, transformation was x equal az right and we are interested in finding what is the distribution of this x so we want what is fx of x so what we are saying is this can be written as fz of a inverse x times uh, modulus of determinant of a inverse so why can we write this like how or like why can we write this uh, fx x as fz of a inverse x times determinant any idea because z is equal to a inverse x right just, and then we just find the like the uh, determinant of the jacobian and multiply it the correct ma'am can you please repeat that jacobian what is relation between this jacobian yes. and here ma'am a is z is equal to a inverse x yeah so yeah. right so but this determinant of a inverse is same as the jacobian that you get yes so uh, what you can do is you can try from your usual method also so before doing this let's do the uh, method that we had seen in week 11 right so from there uh, you know that if you your two random variable is given to you so let's say here z1 z2 i we know this is id normal yeah right id normal 01 and you have uh, x1 uh, you have two random variables to find which are a function of uh, So let's say x one is some uh, g of z one z two, and this I'm defining it as z one, and x two is some h of uh, z one z two. I'm I'm defining it as uh, rho times uh, z one plus under root of one uh, minus, minus rho square z two, right? Yes. Now now what you want is you want to uh, you want to find such functions. Uh, Q and R such that your Q is nothing but G inverse and R is nothing but H inverse and this Q this Q should be a function of let's say some function um, sorry uh, is uh, your you can write your Z such that this is some function of x one x two okay and Z two, which is some function of uh, x one x two, okay. and uh, if you have to find the distribution for uh, x, right? Now you want to find the distribution for x. So what you will do is you will try to convert, you will try to write this Z one Z two in terms of x one x two. This is what you will do. Jacobian matrix, ma'am. uh no 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 like you want these function you want this q or q x1 x2 and z2 to be uh, some function in x1 x2 so in order to get that you need you, you want to uh, like write your z1 in terms of of uh, x1 x2 and same z z2 in terms of x1 x2 so what can you do so uh, you will find z1 equal x1 this is correct and what can z2 become So, for, if you look at this equation, you can write yes, it to us x two minus rho, rho z one divided by one minus root of uh, one minus rho, rho square. square. Okay. And this z one, if you look at the first equation, I can write this as x one. So, is you can write z two as x two minus rho of x one divided by under root of one minus rho square. So now this z one becomes our q. And this uh, min q of x one x two, and this becomes some function r of x one x two. X one x two. So now you want to um, find the Jacobian, right? Yes. So you need to find the Jacobian, and this is going to be uh, dose at one by 
do x1 does at 2 by sorry does at 1 by do x2 and does at 1 by as does at 2 by do x1 x1 does at 2 by do x2 right so this becomes do z1 by do x1 uh, is what so you have z1 which you have written in terms of uh, x1. x1 so this becomes one yes right this becomes zero and next one zero minus zero by one minus rho square and this becomes one upon uh one, one out of one, of one, one square. Square. this is object yeah. okay. now yes, after this when you want to write this z uh, if you want to write this z in terms of uh sorry if you want to write Ma'am, shouldn't, shouldn't it be minus rho upon root one minus rho square no this is x2 x2 oh, is plus coefficient yeah sorry this is the root yeah uh now uh okay so now what we want is we already have uh, the joint distribution for uh, the, uh, z1 z2 now we want it for x1 x2 so in order to find that uh, so if you want uh, some function let's say as g of x1 x2 so this is or just write fx okay so this fx of x uh what is this? So this will be uh, your F Z, your F Z of uh, Q, this Q comma uh, R okay. times modulus of Jacobian. Okay, madam. Right? Yes, yes. Thank you. So what is the determinant that you get here? Uh, determinant uh, you get as uh, 1 by under root one of 1 minus rho square. One minus. So 1 by under root of 1 minus rho square. And you have Fc of, uh, so this is what? You have x1, comma, x2 minus uh, rho x1 divided by one minus rho square, right? So you already know what is the joint distribution for uh, z. So just substitute it there, and you will get uh, the density. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, coming back to, ma'am, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, last time we. We asked Vishal, sir, that whether this Jacobian determinant will be uh, inside modulus or not. So is it uh, that we are considering the mod of the Jacobian determinant? Uh, it will be inside the mod. The Jacobian will, should be, it should be mod of Jacobian. Okay. Yeah. Every time, right? It every time. Every time. Yeah. also, right? Yeah, yeah, it is always a mod of Jacobian. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, here, this is the uh, determinant of uh, Jacobian, right? Uh, determinant of... Mod of Jacobian is simply determinant of Jacobian, right? Yeah, but you also take the mod after that. Like you find the determinant and you put it into modulus. Yeah, ma'am. So I have a very basic question. Can you, can you go up? Oh, I, yeah. Yes, wait. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. So okay. here in the in this line you say that z1 is equal to q and it will take two function x1 and x2. So from uh, q is a such a function that convert x1 and x2 to z1. Now r is another function that converting x1 and n2 into z2. Okay, so this will be a scalar conversion. Or is a vector conversion is happening. So means um, mm -hmm. so is it a scalar or vector conversion is happening? Um, uh, okay, when you say scalar conversion, what do you mean? 
scalar means I am saying that x1 and x2 is a scalar quantity here. Yes. And so, okay, so I got it. So now I got a function that will convert to the original. Okay. So there is, is there any chance of error will be there if I convert such a way? Uh, no, there is no error. Okay, so let's say you have uh, some rectangle here and this rectangle is x which is nothing but x1 comma x2 then like this this we are talking about for a small area very small area so this should be your uh, x1 plus some dx1 comma x2 if you go up it is x1 plus dx1 uh, comma x2 plus dx2 okay and this should be your x1 comma uh, x2 plus dx2 here we are talking about very small area now what we want is we want to convert this in we want to convert this into uh, I mean, you want to preserve the area, but you want to convert this to Z1, Z2. So when you do that, you, you will have, uh, like the area should be, uh, whatever area this covers, the area should be maintained, right? So what, what does your Jacobian uh, says? It says like, how much do you want to scale the old area so that you get the new area, right? So when you are writing uh, this FX, in term when you are trying to find this uh, fx uh, you are converting this to the z1 uh, uh, the z forms uh, z1 z2 so you want to preserve this area right uh, so what can be done is like if you look uh, what we are talking about is just a small portion right now so this can be given as like fx of uh, x dx1 dx2 right so i can write the, you want this to be equal to some epsilon of z times dz1 of dz2 okay this is what we want now epsilon of z this you can write it as uh this z1 z2 you can write this as jacobian right Jacobian times dx1 dx2 this you must have seen before right uh, when you talk about uh, when you change one variable to other this is what you do in calculus you must have seen have you seen this in calculus this one this part no ma'am okay so just remember that this dz1 dz2 you can write this as uh, jacobian uh, times dx1 dx2 so this uh, jacobian is what this jacobian is nothing but what determinant of a inverse so i can write this as fg of uh, z and this is uh, the mod of determinant of a inverse uh, times dx1 dx2 and x was nothing but az right so i can write z as a inverse x so eventually this becomes fc of a inverse x uh, times determinant of a inverse you can cancel this x1 x2 on both sides so you get uh, fx of x as fz of a inverse x uh, times determinant of a inverse so Ma please repeat this last time oh uh, you can you can cancel this dx1 dx2 on both sides right these sides okay 
so uh, and x x was nothing but a z so this uh, this uh, z becomes a inverse x so you can write your fx of x in this form because x was a z right now you know what is fz uh, you have seen before what is fz so what what was fz it was nothing but 1 upon um 2 pi if it was uh, uh, if if z contains d vector it was uh, 2 pi to the power d by 2 but in this case this z is just two uh, random variables z1 z2 so it will be just uh, 1 upon 2 pi and uh, this will become e to the expected value of sorry uh, e to the power minus 1 upon 2 uh, we had seen what we have seen it was norm of y square norm of z yeah, yeah norm of z square right So the same thing we can do it here. So this will become 1 upon under root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2. Now in place of norm of uh, z, uh, we should have uh, a inverse x. So now you have norm of a inverse x whole square. Right? Times determinant of a inverse. So determinant of a inverse was 1 upon under root of 1 minus rho square okay and now this is uh, norm of uh, this is norm of uh, a inverse x square this you can also write it as so 1 upon 2 pi under root of 1 minus rho square e to the power minus 1 by 2 and uh, so you know that this norm of x square this is also inner product of x with x. And what do you say that determinant of? Determinant of a inverse. One upon, Jacobian. 1 upon 1 minus rho square. Yeah, because uh, what was our uh, a inverse? A inverse was... Uh, a inverse was... Uh, wait. One ah, zero inverse, minus yeah. one. one zero minus rho by one square. minus rho square and one by under root of one minus rho square. It should be what minus rho upon root one minus rho square. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So this was a inverse, and if you take the determinant of this, it just you will just get uh, one upon under root of one minus rho square. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, so you know that if for any vector x, uh, if you want to find the norm of it, the square of norm, uh, you get this is nothing but inner product of uh, inner product of x with x, and this is uh, just the dot product which is x transpose x. So the same thing you will do over here, and uh, what is this? What will the same inverse x become? It will become uh, this a inverse x transpose right just compare it with this so it will become a inverse x transpose and a inverse x okay so just solve it you will get 1 upon 2 pi under root of 1 minus rho square e, uh, e to the power minus 1 by 2 so this become x transpose a inverse transpose a inverse x all right now look at this so a inverse transpose a inverse uh, this is nothing but uh, the inverse of covariance matrix so our covariance matrix came out to be uh, this one row row 1 if you check for a a transpose 
if you check for a transpose so what was our a a was 1 0 rho under root of 1 minus rho square this is from the starting we had seen x equal a z right and a was coming out to be this so if you uh, check this this a a transpose so 1 0 rho under root of 1 minus rho square this is nothing but this will uh, this uh, a transpose will come out to be nothing but uh, the covariance matrix okay you can check this so a transpose is nothing but the covariance matrix that we have found now uh, a a transpose is the covariance matrix you take the inverse of this what do you get you get a inverse transpose a inverse right so this is nothing but same as this so we can write this a inverse transpose a inverse as the inverse of the covariance matrix so you can write this as uh, 1 upon 2 pi under root of 1 minus rho square uh, e to the power minus 1 by 2 uh, x transpose covariance matrix inverse times x. Sorry, ma'am, I'm just gotten lost. Uh, we said A transpose inverse is uh, the term that we want to calculate, right? Uh, A, uh, can you repeat? A? A transpose inverse is the same uh -huh. as A inverse transpose into A inverse, right? Yeah, we are saying this, uh, they both are same, correct? I mean, you take the inverse of A, A transpose. Uh, and you will get uh, A inverse transpose A inverse. So we are uh, just... Uh, and what we are saying is... In, instead of this term, yeah. the inverse of the covariance matrix. Yeah, and since this covariance matrix was nothing but A transpose, right? Yeah. Uh, I can say that uh, this, uh, this term uh, over here, that is A inverse transpose A inverse, this is nothing but uh, the inverse of the covariance matrix. Yeah, so what we uh, found here is uh, now again you can see uh, what is this uh, 1 minus uh, rho square it's the determinant of the uh, covariance matrix also? Yeah. Yes. This is also the determinant of the covariance matrix. So, what we are saying Sorry, is... Sorry, the square root of the determinant. Yeah, square root of the determinant. So, this is also can be written as 1 upon 2 pi under root of determinant of uh, sigma. Uh, minus 1 by 2 x transpose oh, ma'am will this be true for even like a 3 like uh, if we have z1, z2, z3. Hmm. Yeah. Just, just the yes, 2 pi yes. will be, just the 2 pi will be yes. changed. Yeah, just, just the 2 pi will be changed. So since in this case we have just two random variables, z1, z2. So we got 2 pi. Then in that case it will just become uh, 2 pi to the power 3 by 2. D by 2 for general. 3. Uh, yeah, in general D by 2. So if you have 3, it will become just 3 by 2. And rest everything will come out to be same. Because uh, this covariance matrix uh it is like whatever you get for different random variable depends on your number of random variable and this x1 x2 again it's the same thing
Ma'am, so uh, can we say it like uh, the objective of this is to get the joint distribution in a vector form, right? For, uh, so, so what we are saying is here, uh, what you have written as x equal a z. So what you got is x is again a normal distribution, right? X is again a normal distribution with the uh, mean mu and variance. You talk about the covariance matrix. Oh, what exactly is mu in this case? Yeah, so if you look in this case, um, okay. This case mu is zero, right? Uh, this case mu is zero. So uh, you can if you write this as wait. So like x transpose x. So x transpose x will become just your uh, uh, norm of x square, right? So if you look this expression and compare it with one upon under root two pi uh, sigma um, uh, e to the power e to the power minus one by two x minus mu uh, upon sigma whole square, right? So this looks something like this resembles something like this. So this we have found for uh, a zero mean. Uh, so this is the uh, distribution for x uh, that we are calling it as a bivariate normal. And it has mean 0 and uh, variance, uh, the variance as covariance matrix sigma. So the same thing, uh, you can extend this to uh, for uh, Sorry. So, yeah, could you scroll up? Uh, here, uh, it was an, uh, sigma one upon sigma under root two pi, right? One upon sigma uh, under root two pi. The right. general uh, formula for the uh, normal hmm. uh, Gaussian distribution. So, uh, but then here we have only one upon two pi. It's not under root two. Yeah, pi. this is because uh, um, there you you had just had one random variable x. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually uh, two. Now here you are talking about two random variables. Okay. This is actually a vector rather than a just simple random variable, right? Yeah. And sigma is equal to root one minus p square. Sigma equal uh, uh sigma is uh this term or uh, under root of determinant of sigma. Okay. Yeah. This will come out to be sigma. Now, if you want to extend this to uh, like non-zero mean, so if you want, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, sigma is standard deviation, right? And we sigma are is as, standard deviation, right? And we are writing it as uh, square root of determinant of covariance matrix, right? Because here we are not dealing with just one and random variable. Your x, so x stands for multiple variable, uh, multiple x, x1, right. x2. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. Uh, I'm still a little confused. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're saying variance is this covariance matrix, right? This variance is the covariance matrix here. Yes. Yeah. And yet we're saying the standard deviation will just simply be the square root of not the covariance matrix, but of the determinant of the covariance matrix. This is where I'm getting lost. So, uh, no, I mean, it's okay because uh, see, uh, you had uh, like standard deviation will be sigma. That is under root of variance, right? Uh, yes. In general, stand, yes. um, square root of variance. So now in this case, uh, uh, like in this case, instead of variance, we are talking about covariance. And not just covariance, it's just determinant of uh, 
determinant of the covariance matrix i mean somewhere it kind of resembles uh, the what you had seen for one uh, one random variable uh no that's fine um i can understand that if the variance of uh, one fine i i understand the variance of two combi combined variance of two variables will obviously have some covariance terms so that's why the determinant yeah. takes care of that i understand that then but then why aren't we using that in the exponential term why and why are we using the covariance inverse why aren't we using the uh determinant of okay uh, the covariance uh, matrix i understand why the determinant of yeah. the covariance matrix is actually uh, my standard deviation i understand that yeah. clearly because the covariance and covariance terms are combined for more than uh, one way uh, one uh, right but i don't understand why in the exponential term we don't have determinant why do we have the covariance matrix itself okay yeah wait let me see if some thing can be done here so are we getting some question from this in final i mean um cannot say that okay yeah okay let me check this maybe some manipulation where they will have to do and i will check this okay okay all right so we can extend this to uh like if you have uh, x that is az plus mu you can so it is just the same result uh, you will just get f of, of fx of x as 1 upon under root sorry 1 upon 2 pi under root of determinant of uh, sigma e to the power minus 1 by 2 so just in place of uh, x now you will write x minus mu transpose sigma inverse x minus mu so this this is the difference that you will get and if you want to extend it for like more than two random variable the only difference that will come is for uh, this 2 pi near the this 2 pi term so instead of 2 pi it will just become 2 pi n by 2 if you are talking about n random variable uh so there is one more thing that we had seen uh that was uh okay so we had stopped that uh here so instead of expanding this instead of expanding after this if we just stop here and proceed further so we had gotten uh we had gotten fx of x right this to be uh, 1 upon under root 2 pi or it was not under root it was 2 pi under root of 1 minus rho square e to the power minus 1 by 2 uh, norm of A inverse x whole square. Right, this is what we got. Uh, so, if we treat, uh, we know what is our A inverse. We know what is our x. So, our A inverse x. If you just write what exactly it is, so you will get what is A inverse. It was one zero uh, minus rho by under root of one minus rho square and uh, one upon under root of One minus rho square, right? And you have x one, x two.
so this can be if you write if you uh, write what is a product so you get x1 times minus rho x1 divided by under root of 1 minus rho square and uh, plus you get x2 uh, divided by under root of 1 minus rho square okay now uh, what what we have to find we have to find uh, this norm square of a inverse x so again if you look at it this is just a vector so we can find its norm so norm a inverse x square this is going to be what so you do x1 square if it was x1 x2 it was just x1 square plus x2 square so this will just become x1 square plus square of this so you have uh, minus rho x1 by under root of 1 minus rho square plus x2 by under root of 1 minus rho square whole square this is what we will get Uh, now let's move to uh, writing this expression. So what we are writing is we are writing fx of x as 1 upon 2 pi under root of 1 minus rho square e to the power minus 1 by 2 uh, norm of the square, right? So I can just do x1 square uh, plus uh, minus rho x1 plus under root of 1 minus rho square plus x2 by under root of 1 minus rho square. Correct. Uh, now this is in uh, a sum, so we can also write this as 1 upon 2 pi is 1 minus rho square uh, exp of minus 1 by 2 I can separate these right so this times e to the power minus 1 by 2 uh, minus rho x1 Correct. So, okay. So, this is nothing but can just extend it further so minus 1 by 2 and you can take 1 minus rho square and root common so if you take the square you get just 1 minus rho square and uh, on the top you get x2 minus rho x1 whole square So what we are uh, going to say is like this fx, this fx, this uh, joint density, you can write it in terms of uh, marginal times conditional, conditional. So you have seen that before that any joint density, like if you have two random variable, let's say, so x, f of x1, x2, you can always write it in terms of marginal times conditional. So you can write it as fx1 uh, times fx2 given x1 or uh, fx1 x2 as fx2 times fx1 given x2. So we can always write in this form, right? So this is what uh, we were trying to uh, break here. Like we are trying to find what is the distribution of x1 and uh, distribution of x2 given x1, okay? So uh, if you look on this side, so the first term itself, uh, just put it there. So I can take 1 under root 2 pi on the other side and leave 1 here. So 1 upon under root 2 pi uh, e to the power minus 1 by 2 
x1 square this can be my one term and since one to uh, under 2 pi we have left so other i can use it here so under 2 pi and uh, again this under root of 1 minus rho square right and then e to the power this term in this term so you see that this is so this looks something like uh, the distribution for uh, x1 as uh, sorry distrib uh, distribution of x1 which is kind of normal normal with mean zero and variance one right so if you look at just this term this will resemble something like your x1 is again a normal random variable with mean zero and variance one and this term that you get so from here what we are getting is x1 is a normal distribution with mean zero and variance uh, variance one and this x2 uh, given x1 so uh, this is for x2 right this is for this again looks like a normal distribution but this is for x2 if your xn is given x1 is given so this also looks like something like normal distribution with mean rho x1 right with mean rho x1 and variance 1 minus rho square uh 1 minus rho square So you can also uh, like split it uh, as x1 fx1 times fx2 given x1. So given the joint distribution, you can also from from that joint distribution, you can also find the marginal and the conditional. quite complicated uh, yeah just some calculation is there uh, but yeah I mean you'll have to take care of the terms here it's all made sense but it's just the whole derivation derivation it's very tough yeah so you like, can just yeah yeah it's e like after understanding it is fine but it's like very difficult to remember all these formulas yeah it's typical you cannot remember you cannot remember these actually exactly so like <laughs> i don't see how in the during exam how we can like, i mean exam we you cannot expect such complicated expressions uh, I mean, like if for example a formula like the formula given then we can apply those i mean th that is still understandable but i'm not sure about the questions like this uh, so the questions from your activity uh, and practice assignment. What I will do, so uh, the problem is I cannot share this uh, only if you have Microsoft and uh, uh, this thing, then you can Sorry. access it. Sorry, ma'am? Uh, like I cannot share it with everybody, this one. It's not uh, possible. Can't you convert it into some sort of PDF that is shareable? Uh, yeah, yes, that that I will do. Yeah. Once it's converted to PDF, I think anyone can. So, so uh, how you are you sharing it, it or no? PDF? Yeah, I I will share it. I will share it. I will uh, take maybe a screenshot and put it in the PDF form. Hello. Mail or how how like we will update that it has been uploaded uh, and uh, it will be and we'll also mention where is it uploaded so you will get the access but can you have a mail id sorry mail id M my yeah. mail id yes ma'am uh, you can write it on the common email id uh, this cs2004 right. i didn't get it what uh, is mail id cs2004 PS tools. Can you please write that in the yes, ma'am. Chat. chat in the room? Oh, wait. Uh, but wait, why do you need email ID? In case this document is not uploaded and we are. No, no, we'll, we'll upload it. We'll upload it. We'll upload it. By tomorrow morning, it will get uploaded. 
Oh, excuse me. So, that means the G drive or how do we check? Where do we check? That you check in the. We'll mention where it is being uploaded so that you can check. But ma'am, I don't receive that information where it is uploaded. So either it should be uploaded at a common place. Okay, I will make sure that a mail goes to you and uh, uh, where is it uploaded? It is also mentioned so that you. It's not difficult. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. In any case, can you just uh, give the mail ID you have just mentioned you know, just for? Uh, uh, okay, you can sir. take my mail ID. Um, it is. Uh, take it here. I'll wait. I'll put it in the chat box. Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yes. Uh, mom, just to summarize this whole thing, I mean, uh, just hear me out if I'm uh, going okay. anywhere wrong. I mean, in the summary, uh, yeah. we started with the we started with the uh, egg, uh, the Z1, Z2, which are the normal, uh, which are the uh, which have normal Standard, uh, normal distribution. Ah, uh, uh, stress. Ah. Uh, and then that there are other variable which is called x1 x2 which can be written in a form of x z1 and z2 right so uh, so we found out uh, uh, the uh, a way to write a, uh, a way to write the uh, sorry uh, the very sorry so basically this x that you that, that you have written as az uh, so this x is called the bivariate normal distribution with mean zero, okay. And uh, this distribution, this distribution for x, if it was uh, just two random variable x one x two, it comes out to be uh, just write it here. So you have uh, okay. bivariate normal distribution. So you have uh, this x equal az as a bivariate normal distribution uh, so if you want to uh, so the distribution of x comes out to be 1 upon 2 pi times determinant of this covariance matrix times e to the power minus 1 by 2 x transpose of sigma inverse x now, if we talk about uh, the non-zero mean, like um, you, excuse yeah. me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, this equation we found out uh, that we can write the distribution of x in a form of coefficient of z. The coefficient of that equation that we uh, we, we wrote uh, x equals to z and uh, x x two equals to. Uh, Okay. I mean, we 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 only use the coefficient in forming a, a covariance matrix, not not the actual z anywhere. I mean, I cannot see any z here in this equation. So I can uh, I can define this equation. That's a distribution of x in a form of coefficient of those equations. Uh, coefficient of uh... Co coefficient rho and one minus rho. Uh, the two equation like uh, x1 equals to z which uh, and x uh, no but uh, this i mean you're writing the distribution of x uh, um so why are you talking about the coefficient okay. sorry mom it's a, it's a long process so i I'm, i must be confused uh so these uh this sigma was the uh, can you can you Give me a little boost up on what is this? Yeah, uh, so this sigma, 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 sigma is... was the covariance matrix, right? We found the covariance matrix of X. How covariance matrix form? You think this, and this, No, this uh, uh, this uh, covariance matrix is what? This covariance matrix is nothing but uh, your uh, variance of X one. 
variance of x2 covariance of x1 x2 covariance of x2 x1 this we had already found right we calculated variance of x1 we calculated variance of x1 uh, covariance of x1 x2 and okay. what we and what we also saw is the covariance of x is also equal to a a transpose this a is same as this a and one more thing that we saw is uh, that determinant of uh, a inverse um, mod is the same as mod of the jacobian this we also saw okay yeah um, why did yes, uh, why did the covariance matrix of x become the same as a a transpose it is same right covariance of x is a a transpose x is uh, a is it right x is a z Uh, we can do uh, some questions maybe yes please yeah oh ma'am ma'am after this the the other thing that we did uh, this this last one can you scroll a uh, bit yeah so the last thing what we did is like if you have uh, like in place of uh, uh, like going to uh, splitting this a inverse x uh, norm square in as the inner product it would have expanded this like we knew what is our a inverse we knew what was our x uh, so if you expand this if you find this norm actually and just write it in a, a particular way uh, so what you will see, what you saw is that this uh, joint distribution of x the joint pdf of x can also be written as product of marginal time uh, conditional like this result you have already seen in stats 2 right uh, stat 3 you have seen this that any uh, joint distribution can be written as product of marginal times conditional so here yes. so here we have also found like uh, this can be the joint uh, like marginal of x1 and this can be the uh, x2 given x1 so this is uh, oh, oh, this one thing that was done in the lecture and it was left as an exercise to do the other one so maybe uh, you can try this one and if you some one of uh, some of you get it you can maybe put it on this course maybe the other one okay mom if you're not able to put this uh, i mean through pdf if there there's not direct export option in this microsoft you can take a screenshot and then put it because uh, i mean to get to the whole process i have to see uh, ah, see it yeah, all yeah. through again okay. uh, uh, we'll do it we'll put the screenshot itself okay so somebody has put a doubt in uh, question 4 and 6 of aq 12.1 okay let's look at this question first Uh, which question was that? Uh, four is it? Yes, from four and four and six. Four and six. Okay. Uh, what is the variance of Z? Okay. We all can try this question first. So, uh, see, Y follows the normal distribution with mean mu and variance. Uh, variance uh, the sigma okay and y is nothing but y1 y2 y3 and the mean of this y is given by 3 1 and the covariance matrix is given to you now uh, you are defining another random variable z okay which is some uh, vector c times y right so you have to find what is the 
uh, variance of z so first of all what is c by can someone tell me what is c by mom sorry to interrupt mom it's other thing mom can you like uh, what are the other names of finding the same thing on the on the other platform like i want to find the a different version i mean uh, some other video related to the same topic so um because here it's a it's just a different name like by variant that the uh, i mean it's it's just a different name what is we are starting so specifically if i want to find what to uh, uh, i mean the last derivation what are the keywords i, I should search for oh uh, keyword should you search for maybe you can search for the last for the last one you can search for uh, conditional yeah conditional will help yes conditional uh, multivariate derivation something like that i mean in the lecture you want to look for um, where to look right no ma'am oh, no, not no, in the you, like okay, on the okay, okay. Uh, youtube or you can just like go to multivariate uh, a normal i think you will find it or maybe there will okay. be some documents available online that also you can check okay thank you thanks you can also refer to textbooks yes mom i have some okay yeah. okay so what is uh, what is cy ma'am is it 2y1 minus y2 yes plus y3 right 3y3 yeah now you want to find the variance of z so what will you do uh the the constants will come out as squares yeah right yeah so you will just get let me write but then we don't know variance of y1 you know variance of y1 so uh it is given to you that y follows normal distribution with mean mu and variance uh, given as this covariance matrix right? so then what are we supposed to do with this matrix yeah so you know this is a covariance matrix so in the covariance matrix uh, this so first the diagonal elements will be the variance yes right okay okay got it i will ask excuse me ma'am ah uh, yes here if i want to write uh, uh, density of uh, y mm. then i need to determine uh, determinant of sigma right ma'am but um. here it is 3 cross okay it's 3 cross three. so always it will be uh, square matrix only right ma'am sigma yes it will be square matrix okay Okay. Oh, sorry, ma'am. What would what would be the answer for the variance? Oh, uh, so you just have to uh square the coefficient. So you will get two square, which is four. So it would be four, four into times... six plus one into thirteen plus nine into four. Yeah. So you get wait. Uh, four times six six. Plus one times thirteen plus uh, nine times four. Yes. Ma'am, how that is being calculated? How is that calculated? Okay. Yeah. Wait. let me write is it a direct formula or something none of the options seem to be matching
to the point one. So y is so is at y follows normal with sigma and uh, what is mu given? This Ma'am, three, one, four. Three, one, four, So you want um, variance of z. So variance also uh, z is nothing but c times y, right? So what is c times y? C is given to be two minus one, three, and uh, y is your y one by two by three. So this is nothing but. 2y1 minus, minus y2 plus 3y3. So if you want the variance of uh, 2y1 minus y2 plus 3y3. So this become 4 times so. Uh, Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the formula for variance of uh, sum of random variable? So. You know, variance of uh, x one plus x two. You also get the co uh, covariance term, right? So we get variance of uh, x1 plus uh, variance of x2. Okay, variance of x2. Plus covariance of x1 x2 this is for two random variable but right now we have three random variables so if you extend it to three you will get variance of x1 plus x2 plus x3 uh, this is nothing but uh, it will be variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3 Okay, it should be two times, right? It should be two times, yeah. Plus two times covariance of x2, x3. x2, x3. Yeah, x2, x3. And uh, then you should have x1, x3, right? So x1, x3. Correct. Will we be subtracting some other term also? Uh, no, that's all. That's all. So, uh, if you look at this, this is nothing but variance of uh, 2y1 uh, plus minus y2 
plus 3 by 3. Right. So this can be written as uh, this 4 times variance of uh, y1. plus variance of y2 plus 9 times variance of y3 plus two times covariance of 2y1 comma minus y2 right plus 2 times covariance of uh, minus y2 3x3 then you'll have to use the property of covariance also and then plus 2 times uh, covariance of 2y1, 3y3. Okay. So it's become complicated. So what was variance of y1? It was 6. 6 for 24. Plus uh, y2 is... Uh, 13, 4. 13 plus 4. Then you have uh, 2. Uh, Ma'am, it would be 36, 9 into 4. Right? Okay, yeah, 9 into 4, 36. So, okay. so, so the elements are the variances for x1. Yeah, but you need to take this constant out, right? So it will become minus 2, minus 2 times 2, so minus 4, minus 4 times covariance of y1, y2, correct? Uh, then minus 3, minus 6 times covariance of y2, y, sorry, it is y3 y2 y3 and uh, 3 to 6 12 plus 12 times covariance of y1 y3 correct and now what is covariance of y1 y2 so y1 y2 is just one so this will become minus four what is y2 y3 y2 y3 is uh, four, four. So this become uh, minus 24 and y1, y3 is minus 2. So minus 24 we get here. Yeah. So if you add everything, you get uh, from here 6. Okay. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, we have to do these many uh, calculations, ma'am. Minus. Yeah, like if you have to find the variance, like if it was independent, you could have just uh, added. But uh, I, uh, but these are not independent, right? These y1, y2, y3 are not independent. So you'll have to take care of uh, uh, covariance. Ma'am, actually we were given with covariance matrix, ma'am, in the uh, solved examples, uh, sir, or someone, I don't know, they solved using C, where the covariance matrix into C transports. That's all, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, sir has given a formula in case of multivariate. Yes, ma'am. C into covariance matrix into C transpose. Uh, no, that you're talking about. Uh, covariance, ma'am. Yeah, something like okay. y is uh, equal to A transpose x. E yes, yes. There is this property. Sorry, yeah. There is this property. Uh, mm, okay. This will be real. Really, it would be confusing, no, ma'am. Uh, yeah, yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will go through that also. Yeah. So yes, this way comes to what this is uh, forty-eight, uh, fifty-two. So you get uh, twenty-one as the answer. 
so there is one property that i had missed uh, so this property says like uh, if you have uh, uh, some if you have uh, x equal y z okay or let's say you have uh, x following the normal distribution with mean mu and variance as sigma then your y will follow uh sorry and if you have uh, some y wait just hold on Uh, can you tell me what was the property? Yes, ma'am. That yeah. is C into variance, I mean the covariance matrix into C transpose. C into, uh, no, uh, wait, tell me again. C into, okay, this covariance matrix, ma'am. Okay. Ma okay. Then C transpose. C transpose. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is a variance for what? For y, variance okay. of y. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why is in for uh, in this case you have y equals cy? I mean your y is cy here, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you check this? What are you getting? You get the answer? Yes, same answer. Same answer. 21. 21 you get. Okay. Yes, and that is v, uh, variance of z is uh, variance of cy. So we are getting c outside. So we get a c squared variance of y. Uh, that hmm. c squared we are doing as c into c times. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, this much calculation may not have been needed. Uh, yeah, I, I will look into this property. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So C uh, into covariance matrix into C transpose will give us uh, the variance. Of the variance for uh, this uh, this Z. one Z. Yeah, variance for Z. So you can check variance of oh, Z will be uh, C or uh, Sigma C transpose. Okay. What about expectation of Z? Uh, expectation of Z will be uh, C into I think just multiply. Mean. Yeah. C I think C times uh, mu. I guess C times mu, it should be. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So expected value of Z will be uh, the C times mu. So we'll do more problems when we meet again on C Saturday. C times mu would be the multiple of 3, 1, 4 with 2 minus 1, 3. Yeah. So you'll get the constant. That, that should be 6 minus 1 plus 12. Yeah. Oh, Ma'am, as far as concepts are concerned, is this the all from V12? No, this is just one chapter. Then you have, uh, OK, I'll tell you. so. Uh, everything after this you have already seen in stats too. 
so uh, the next chapter goes for the ml estimator so ml estimator we have seen in very detail in stats too so you can just revise from there the content is the same and uh, then you have uh, uh, the normal uh, this part like uh, you have gaussian mixture model so there uh, the adapt is also you have studied something in uh, uh, stats too so like uh, if you want maybe we can discuss it again in stats adapt session so just yes, check please, it once we we need a refresher on that as well yeah so uh, uh, that is one thing and then you have all those inequalities So you have weak loss, large number. You have uh, Markov, Chebyshev, shapes, CLT, and one more inequality that is added that is Hofstede inequality. Uh, not much has been covered in that. It just uh, the statement has been given for Hofstede. So not much is there. Uh, but the week three, uh, sorry, lecture three, I think uh, there is something new that has to be seen. So when we meet next uh, Saturday, this Saturday, uh, we'll do more problems from week twelve, and uh, we'll take a few topics. Um, also, ma'am, a request: like in the revision session, could you please highlight like which which topics are the more important one? Because um, actually, like I personally find like there is too much content in this course. Yeah, so, the content uh, uh, is. It's, it's humanly, I believe, humanly impossible to remember all those formula, all those. I mean, yeah. Like, so, uh, I suppose week eleven, twelve should be okay because week eleven is all starts to nothing is new there except yeah, transformation of random variable. The problem but is it's still the it's huge. Like I understand, like almost everything is covered in one week. So. Exactly, and the problem is like. Even though I understand what is happening, it's really difficult for me to remember all those formula and all those. Like, I, 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 I'm like I will, um, like the mistakes I would most likely make is with the formula, like remembering the formula and maybe just writing something else instead. That is my concern for the end term. Ah. Uh. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Please try so to provide the formula form sheets for us, ma'am. That would be very helpful yes. to us. So, formula sheet so far has not been given, and uh, we do not expect a lot of formulas uh, for this. Uh, formula sheet basically for uh, week eleven, twelve. You're asking, right? For the whole, I uh, especially for this week too. We have more yeah, formulas in these two weeks. It would be great if we could get for the whole course, but at least like for these last two weeks, because honestly, mean the mean variance and the distributions, yeah. uniform Poisson, everything. Exactly. Okay, so so far, it has not been given, but we'll check if it's possible, and we can update you. Okay. Rather, could you just like in the during the revision, you could just highlight which particular chapters we could focus upon. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean that would be that that is the only help I I believe we can get. But uh, as far as I know, the portion is almost like uh, equal, so cannot say anything. <laughs> That's the problem because we have week one to twelve equal portions. Yeah. We have to revise so much, and there's too much content actually in this particular course. Um, yeah, that's. Me.